Well, hello everyone, and here we are once again for another TESOL le lesson. Sorry about that. Uh, we're uh, continuing what we call lesson management, and today we're focusing on free talking lessons. Now, I'm sure many of you out there have had free talking lessons, whether it's one on one or in a classroom environment. A lot of times people have one idea of what a free talking lesson is. But let's check out uh, the thinking here. So what is a free talking class? Is it just talking? Is it just talking about anything? Is it what many teachers might believe is an easy lesson? Is it a break from teaching? Sometimes uh, teachers might think, oh good man, I have a free talking class today. Ah, I don't have to do anything, just talk. Just Talk about anything. I don't have to prepare. So great class. Like normally maybe possibly every Friday, every Tuesday is free talking. So it's like a teacher might think that's a break. But uh, the reality is uh, these are wrong ideas about free talking lessons. Free talking lesson is not just talking. Uh, it's not just talking about anything. And it's certainly not an easy lesson. As a matter of fact, in my opinion, if a free talking lesson is conducted in a proper way or in a logical way, it's actually more tiring than a lesson uh, that has materials prepared or has uh, uh, a lesson that uh, lesson materials. I guess we would just say a, a book or something like that. Uh, but it's certainly not easy. It requires some preparation. And a free talking class is not a break from teaching. Just because we say quote unquote free talking, it does not mean that we don't have to teach. It's just talking, uh, which is tied together here. No, not at all. And so hopefully your, uh, your curiosity is, uh, has gotten picked and you're a little curious or interested about what we're going to be doing or talking about uh, in the next slides. But uh, just talking? No. What happens? Teachers talk, 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 and the student is so sad they don't understand much at all. No. Talk, talk, talk. Because sometimes when a lower level learner or uh, another, maybe even a little higher than low level, uh, is encountered or in a free talking lesson encounters a teacher who's just talking we have to understand what happened to comprehensible input remember according to Krashen's theory or hypotheses, five hypotheses, the monitor theory to which I subscribe to and agree there should be a comprehensible input plus one now imagine you're talking to a student without a context, you're talking to the student without any kind of schema or background information, you're, you may be talking about various things. Student doesn't have a lot to lock onto. And so you may be presenting, presenting what is known as incomprehensible input. It's input that they don't know about. It's vocabulary that they may have not heard before. It's uh, uh, an amorphous context or ambiguous topic that they're dealing with that they can't really lock onto, latch onto. So just talking does not fit the bill. Just talking about anything, I like uh, blah, 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 blue, uh, instead of just the blah, 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 <laughs> just talking. Talking about anything and everything under the sun. Sometimes the teacher might uh, begin the class, Hey, how was your day? What kind of food do you like? What are your interests? What are your future plans? Etc. Etc. And there's no context here. There's no uh, logical attachment to any particular context. And so uh, we're going all over the place and we can't seem to find what to talk about. And so Talking about anything, again, doesn't really fit the bill of having a quote-unquote lesson. If we call it a lesson, there should be something that the lesson is about. The lesson should present, not just blah, 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 bloop. 
And so we should keep that in mind if we're uh, talking about a free talking lesson. An easy lesson, blah, 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 blah. The teacher just keeps talking because it's an easy lesson. What makes it easy for the teacher? Because the teacher can sit back, stop teaching, stop letting the student talk, and now it's the teacher's turn to talk. That's what might be the uh, paradigm among ESL teachers when we're talking about a free talking lesson. Yes, I can finally talk as a teacher. I can finally share my thoughts and ideas uh, and not just let the, the student talk to me. Uh, wrong. Not quite. You know what? Uh, I know this is uh, a native speaker, obviously, but the idea is there. Oh, man, this teacher just keeps talking and talking and talking. Wow, she can talk. She sure talks a lot about herself. And so uh, a free talking lesson is not a license for the teacher to just share. It's so much more than that. A free talking lesson has something to teach. And it has definitely something that it's something with a purpose. It has a goal. And it definitely has a context. Now, free talking, a break from teaching. Boop, 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 boop. I like thinking about that, uh, bluff, because that might be something someone uh, is doing as they go underwater. Bloop, 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 such as this. Uh, you can also notice the, the information end point. Teachers kiss, teacher just keeps talking and talking and talking. We're talking about anything, talking about everything. I don't have to prepare anything as a teacher. And it goes in maybe one ear and out the other. The student's not really getting anything because, again, going back to comprehensible input, maybe they're just not getting it. Remember, teachers, they're not native speakers. They can't sit around at the coffee pot or in the break room and converse with your co-teachers, your fellow native speakers, or uh, fellow proficient English speakers, speakers, and have this conversation. They're not at that level yet. If they were, maybe they should be teaching in your school, your academy, or uh, wherever you are. So it's not a break from teaching, and it's not a chance for a teacher to just keep talking. Uh, maybe a response from the student might be, all we did was talk. I don't think I learned anything. And the, the urgency is you're losing them. Sooner or later, they're going to say, this teacher talks too much. I'm not learning anything in this lesson, and I don't understand what my teacher is saying sometimes. So it's very frustrating. And you're going to lose your student-customer. I like to uh, subscribe to what I call a uh, student customer methodology where we treat the students as, as customers as who they are and seek their best interest. If we seek their best interest and they're satisfied, wow, they're walking, talking advertisements for your skills and for the company perhaps that you're working with or working for. Okay, so definitely free talking is not a break from teaching. Free talking, in fact, is a great opportunity for the learner to learn in a communicative way. Wonderful chance for the language learner to interact or the language learners in a classroom to interact directly with you or with each other in uh, groups. It depends on your uh, strategy. Uh, I'm talking about either a one-on-one -on -one situation or even a classroom environment here. I'm not giving you specific strategies about that. We're simply discussing a free talking lesson, what exactly uh, we're talking about. But it's a wonderful opportunity to have, to, to kind of break the limitations and the barriers of a quote-unquote book lesson or formalized lesson. It's a chance to kind of break free of that and have more interaction in a natural communicating way. But, 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 you must have a plan. You can't just walk into the classroom and say, let's talk. It doesn't work. Certainly not for the student. And for you, it could be an embarrassment because you might get a complaint 
Or you might end up stuck. Hmm, what shall we talk about today? That's very unprofessional. That doesn't work well in a professional language teaching environment. If you're hanging out with friends, okay, what can I say? But if you're in a professional English language teaching environment, that's not going to work. Definitely not. We need to have a subject. We need to have questions. And we certainly need to have some activities prepared if uh, that's going to be part of your uh, strategy for engaging the learners. Okay, It could be like if you're having a class. If you have a class, break them into groups. That's an activity. Have them ask each other questions, question Q&A, or prepare questions or prepare answers. This is just up to you. It's the activities. Again, that's your call, your strategy. But let's talk about free talking. Now, if you want questions, I have a great source for you. Many of you out there already know this one. But an excellent resource for conversation questions and topics. Now, notice what I'm talking about. Topics is uh, ITESLJ.org. They have a great supply of questions and topics. Each one has many questions. Uh, some of them have up to, I think, 20, 50, 100 questions per topic. And as I know, the, the last count that I had was about 200 topics. So you're not really going to run out of anything. So it's up to you to choose a, a topic that you think might be of interest to your learners. How do you know if it is going to be interesting? As a teacher, you should know your class. You should know their interest. You should know what your students like and don't like. You should know what the culture is into or not into. So that should be your guide, right? If you're being a professional teacher, you're very aware of your students' needs or at least aware of what your students' needs and interests are. So you can match these uh, topics with your learners. So you can choose any one of these and click on it and you've got all kinds of questions. And we'll talk more how to progress through that in a moment, but uh, an excellent resource. If you have other resources, oh, by all means, please send them to me. I know there are others out there, seen there, been there, done that, but maybe you have a resource that's even better. Feel free to send that. I'd be happy to include that in future videos. But let's move on. Free talking, interaction is the approach. This, how do we approach the, the, the lesson? Not TPR, not audiolingual, not GTM, but interactive approach. Free talking lesson, we're interacting with our learners. Not just interviewing, but interacting. Again, many times in our lessons, it's all of, if you are a, a currently an ELT, you can tell or you get from your lessons, it's a lot of interview. It's a lot of asking students questions and getting them to answer. But in a real conversation, let's say you're on an airplane sitting next to someone you want to talk to or your student is, the person that they want to talk to or the foreigner or the person, the English speaker, is not going to have a bunch of questions prepared. So the learner has to learn how to interact, to elicit questions, to create questions, and, of course, to answer. So this is great real-world training, i.e. communicative competence or communicative competence. So remember, free-talking lessons are not an interview. Now, I was talking earlier about how some teachers will just talk, talk, talk. Other teachers will just come into the class with a list of questions, perhaps even a topic, and just start asking questions, and the student answers. So it's like an interview on a news show or a, or a, a talk show. Uh, if you get my example, maybe, so what do you like to do on your day off? What do you do when you don't have time? When you don't have time, what would you like to be doing? You know, and so it's like an interview. It's really strange. That doesn't happen in a bus station when two people are sitting next to, to each other. 
What we want to do is build that confidence in the learner, how they can talk freely, free talking, with another person. It should be a two-way dialogue. We should be able to ask and then answer, and they should ask. This is one of the reasons why I ask my students in classes, please ask me the same question I asked you in a natural way. So what do you like to do on your day off? And then they will answer, and then I'll say, okay, could you ask me this, the same question? Eventually, they'll get the idea, and then they'll ask you the same question that you're asking them. And as they build more and more confidence, they might even start asking you follow-up questions that you haven't asked, because they might even have a curiosity. It's also a way to teach them how not to parrot, to sound like parrots. For example, what are your interests? And then the student uh, answers. And then, of course, the student realizes that they're supposed to ask me. That's, that's common courtesy, by the way, even in uh, a language, in, in an environment, a Western environment, certainly, that's common courtesy. I ask you, you ask me. But we don't want to pair it. What are your interests, I ask. They answer, and then they say, what are your interests? I say, what do you like to do when you have free time? They answer, then they ask, what do you like to do in your free time? Kind of strange, redundant, and parroting. What they could, what you could teach them to say is be more natural. Perhaps they could say, well, how about you, teacher? Or what do you think, teacher? Instead of parroting the same question, you can teach them that naturalness in communication. Now, warning or note, teachers, when a student asks you a question, it's not an opportunity for you to elaborate and fill up uh, time, all kinds of time, talking about what you think and what you feel and what you've experienced. Definitely not. That answer time is a, an excellent way for you to provide a brief example of how the student could answer that question. It's not a time for you to bear your feelings or share your vast experiences. But it is a time to model how the student could answer such questions. Give them something to go on and then you help them to elaborate. Just want to make that note. So keep your answers brief, but encourage them to say more. Feedback is extremely important. It doesn't do any good if we're just talking, talking, asking questions, answering questions, asking me questions, answering questions. It doesn't do any good. Perhaps it does build confidence and fluency. I won't discount that. However, a class is just not complete unless there's feedback. Students always want to know if I'm doing this, or if I'm saying this right, or if this pronunciation is correct, or if this is the right grammar form. They always want to know. And if they don't, they're very low, low motivated. Now, that's a different issue. But they want to know how they're doing. If you don't give them feedback, how will they know? So even though they had a chance to talk, without the feedback, I think they might feel a little cheated. And so over the years, I've experienced that feedback creates or generates a very appreciative student. Now, there are different ways that you can give feedback. One of them is simply echoing. You ask the student, what did you do yesterday? And the student says, I go to my parents' house or I go to my parents' house, grandparents' house, or I go to school yesterday, right? So what does the teacher do? The teacher can give direct feedback. They can simply say, ah, remember now, when we talk about the past, we use the past form of the verb. So in this case, you could say, I went. That's very direct. Some students respond to that. Other students don't really like that. It's embarrassing. You're embarrassing them in front of the class, or they feel embarrassed in front of you if it's a one-on-one -on -one class. So you can use what is called Echoing. You can simply echo the grammatically uh, accurate statement. 
You can do it in the first person or you can do it in the second person. For example, what did you do yesterday? Oh, teacher, I go, I go to school. Ah, I went to school. First person echo. Another, ah, you went to school. So this is a way to provide feedback in a non-threatening, non-shaming way. Now, some students will respond to it. They'll simply uh, say, ah, yes, teacher, I went to school. Wonderful. Other students may not respond to that. It depends really on your learner. There's no one size fits all. That's why we have different ways of giving feedback. You as a teacher have to find what works for your students, what works for your class. Sometimes uh, you can type it out. If you're using a computer, you can write it on the whiteboard. And not to embarrass the students, but you can simply write what they could say as a kind of real-time feedback. I don't know about you, but I sure appreciate real-time feedback. If I'm doing something and maybe it's not quite as good as I want, I would appreciate if someone would give me some feedback. Uh, for example, I speak Filipino limited, not so much, but I can speak it. I would appreciate it if people would give me more feedback, but they don't, because I think they might feel embarrassed or that I might be embarrassed. But the idea is in a, cl a formal classroom environment where you're actually learning a language, I think the students would appreciate some feedback. You can wait until after class and discuss it with your learners. Make sure you're taking notes. Or in a different setting, you prepare an after class report. So feedback is the key to improvement. It's very necessary. If uh, you're going to have a free talking class, providing that feedback makes it a full lesson. Not just talking, building confidence, building fluency, but also showing the learner in that context of free talking where they could improve some things. Also, feed, uh, free talking helps to identify some maybe common issues or recurring issues that the learner has because they're really going to surface during that time because there's no structured uh, A, B, C, D lesson that is often the case in language learning classes. Now, I mentioned about direct feedback already. That's where you, you take, you talk about the, the, the grammar form or the pronunciation. Okay, so we say it like this, photograph. An echoed form, like, ah, yes, you took a photograph. Yeah, that's an echoed form, a typed form. Uh, of course, you would put the phonology of that, the, uh, the phonetics of it on the board, or type it, and then after class, same thing. So it's really dependent on you, your situation, and how your learner will accept the feedback. Okay? But the bottom line is improvement is the goal. That's what we want. We want our learners to improve. I have uh, uh, a knife being sharpened, and that's what we are. As teachers, we're that sharpener. By providing the feedback, we're sharpening that knife. Now imagine if the knife is always cutting, 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 but never sharpened. Eventually it's going to get dull. So put that in the English language learning context. The student's always using their English, but no one is giving them feedback. It's going to get dull. And it comes to a point where what we call fossilization. So we don't want that to happen. We want happy, satisfied customers and people who can actually go out and use the language as they had hoped. So feedback given by the teacher is an excellent way to sharpen those English skills. My advice, never let a student leave your class without taking at least one thing that they learn. You don't have to have 10, 20, 50 points in your lessons, in your classes. They don't have to remember 20, 30 vocabulary items. If they can just remember one thing that helped them, one thing that was relevant and meaningful to them, that was a good class. And they're going to remember. They're going to associate this memory, this good class, with you, their teacher. So please keep that in mind when you're teaching. 
It's not about me getting through the lesson. It's about creating a good rapport for you and your company with that student. Okay, marketing, right? So that's how we can get those happy, satisfied customers. Let's look at the process real quick. If you're having a free talking class, you might want to warm up with the subject directed questions. Let's say you're talking about, mm, what can we say? Deforestation. And you might bring up a subject uh, that's really deep, right? That's the first thing that came to my head. I'm so sorry. I'd have to look around. Let's change that. X. Holidays. You wouldn't talk about, let's just say, American holidays. How about with, uh, let's say it's a Chinese learner. Maybe you ask the Chinese learner about the upcoming New Year's celebration. And then you get from them. So it's kind of a warm-up. Then you can transition into the, the lesson topic or the free talking topic of, guess what, holidays. You can just transition to that even without announcing it. What do I mean by announcing? Okay, today we're going to talk about holidays. Now it sounds really good and professional, but it's kind of strange. You don't see two people talking at a bus stop. Well, hi, how are you? Today, let's talk about the weather. Uh, they don't do that. That's not natural. So you warm up. Oh, so what's going on with the Chinese New Year? How does that work? And then they answer the question, and then you transition into other questions related to holidays. So what, it, what do you like to do when you have a day off for a holiday? You don't have to announce the topic. Then you get into your questions, and you give feedback. It can be real-time feedback. Of course, don't interrupt your student. Let them finish their thoughts, but give them real-time feedback or just wait until an opportune time. In my opinion, I prefer kind of the very subtle uh, real-time feedback, but you should always as a teacher kind of take notes of your students' issues. Pronunciation, vocabulary, grammar, etc. Uh, you can ask them to ask you questions. Now you're getting into an activity. Then you kind of wrap things up. Okay, so it's pretty good today talking about holidays, right, class? Or, right, Mr. Wong? Yes. And then you end the lesson. Thank you very much. See you next time, guys. Have a great day. Or uh, if it's a video class, perhaps bye-bye, something like that. So this is the process. You can see now, free talking is not just free talking. You, you, you really should have a pattern, and that's the idea in this lesson today. Let's talk about pollution. Maybe this is something that is a topic for you today. And you can see the warm up, the transition, the questions. I'm not going to get into all that. If you want, you can stop the video and check it out. But this is a, a flow, a lesson flow. Okay, and then you can make this work for a 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 minute class. Of course, you just adjust it accordingly. So that's the idea. Free talking is so much more than just talking. So check that out, but check out the flow, and maybe you can use that in your next free talking class. That's all we have today. Please keep in mind that uh, free talking is not just talking. It's not just talking about anything. It's not an easy lesson. It's not a break from teaching. Free talking lessons, let me move here, are a great opportunity for you to learn, and for the student to learn in a communicative way. But there really should be a plan, a topic, questions, and even activities prepared ahead of time. So please keep that in mind when you're doing your free talking lessons and have a great class.